Bucks to man up. Tom Brady says the Pats will definitely have to adjust without Julian Edelman. New England is 9-0 and and face the division rival Buffalo Bills on Monday Night Football this week. We welcome in our Mark Schlereth. Good mm -hmm. to see you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Please tell us, how vulnerable are the Patriots without Edelman? I think this, uh, just the statement by Tom Brady was, if you really listen to it, it shows you the greatness of the New England Patriots. Basically saying, you're just not going to plug somebody in to take his role, but we're going to do what we do with the guys that we have and put them in positions, not the Julian Edelman position. So many teams think that, we're, hey, we're going to plug in you know, Danny Amendola and we're going to have you do what Julian Edelman does. No, you're not, because Danny Amendola can't do what Julian Edelman does. That guy in the slot is an absolute freak show. And I'm talking about Julian Edelman. He He's nasty. I mean, he gets after people. He's one of those guys that's fearless across the middle. You know, there are very few of those guys that you can that, that can do that, but it goes to show you the mentality of the New England Patriots. We're not going to ask somebody to come in and be Julian Edelman because there, there aren't any Julian Edelmans. What we're going to do is put our guys in the best position based on their skill set to have success. Will there be a drop-off of the three people on the New England Patriots that you look at, three players that you look at that are irreplaceable? Tom Brady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't replace him. Gronkowski, yep. guy's a freak show, and Julian Edelman. So they have lost a large portion of what they do on the offensive side of the ball as far as keeping the chains moving and staying in front of the chains. Julian yep. Edelman did that, and he got the tough, nasty yards for them. And he was, you know, at the wide receiver position, and you don't say this about very many guys, he is one of those guys that sets a tone for their offensive football team from just a pure nastiness standpoint. Mm -hmm. That's Julian Edelman. They're going to miss all those factors about him. Yeah, I agree. So more vulnerable than, are you saying they could lose a game down the stretch? Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it, it's, you know, you look at, you look at their ability to, to stay on schedule, mm -hmm. right? What he does in the middle of the football field, that to me is the biggest thing. You've lost a big portion of the staying on schedule of your offense. right? Being in third down and two, we can live there all day long. We can convert. We've got a lot. We've got a, a, a myriad of different plays that we can run in third and two. You're in third and eight because Julian Edelman isn't across the middle of the ball yeah. for you. That's a different story. And when you lose that aspect of your offense, there's very few guys. Like, not everybody is as tough as Julian Edelman. Not everybody is as nasty as Julian Edelman. There are some guys that lack some of that mental toughness to do the things that he does. Yep. And I'm not saying they're not tough individuals. You don't play in this league if you're not a tough individual, but they're not the same, they're not cut from the same cloth that Julian Edelman is. That guy yep. is a bad dude now. Okay. Let me say this. <clears throat> Please. You know, first things first, question. Julian Edelman, is he out of how long? Well, we don't know. I mean, he could come back for the playoffs, but he's out for a significant the amount Jones of time. Fracture and, and it's it's a bad injury, and there's a chance he won't come back at all. There's a chance. Remember, he won't Dez rush back, and he's still Dez is missing practice this week with foot. So I'm assuming his foot is still aching. Okay. All Minimum right. okay. six week injury. But, 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 all right. Minimum yeah, six week injury. Yeah, but they say injuries. it's a three month recovery. That's yeah. what all the surgeons say. Minimum six week injury. I'm thinking it's Julian Edelman who's a bad you-know-what, mm -hmm. and you take that into account along with the fact that you've got seven games to go, and, of course, there's always the bye week that is the playoffs because you'll have one of the top seeds sure. in the conference. So we're talking about uh, close to nine weeks that Julian Edelman will have. I'm predicting he's going to be back. Having said all of that, let's analyze this. Last time I checked, you actually have to play somebody. So I have to take the competition into consideration when I think about the loss of Edelman. Mm -hmm. Certainly, Correct. he injures you offensively if he's out of the lineup because you rely on him, those three guys that are invaluable. You still got two of them, and Gronkowski and Brady. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brandon LaFell is still up in there. Danny Amendola might be able to do some things for you. You lost Deion Lewis, but LeGarrette Blunt is no slouch. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the Patriots organization, who is the creme de la creme. They are just elite. They're very, very thorough at what they no do. No question about and it. And it can't be disputed. Mm -hmm. Now let's analyze who they're going up against. This week, they're going up against the Buffalo Bills. Stephen Gilmore stupidly talked about how they'll be ready for the Patriots. Just gave them bulletin board material, opened his mouth. The Buffalo Bills are going to pay for that. We know that's coming. 
After that, you got the Denver Bronco. Oswald is your quarterback now, not Peyton Manning. I'm sorry, I don't believe for one second that Os Brock Oswald is going to beat the New England Patriots. I just don't see it. I don't see it happening. The Philadelphia Eagles. Well, Mark Sanchez might be the quarterback there. Or Sam Bradford, mm -hmm. not Bradford. Uh, uh, I think that's a win. And then we got the Houston Texans. Oh, my goodness. I'm so touched. They got Brandon Whedon now. I didn't see the see the news. Did you see the news, Slayer? I mean, it's Brandon Whedon now. They, 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 they got a quarterback now, according to Jerry Jones. So that three is. You, know, you, you, remember, you, remember, you remember Brandon Whedon, yep. the guy that Jerry Jones said, boy, could he really throw a football? Right. And, then we, we, and then weeks later, you cut him. Okay, you let him go. All right. So we all know the value. You know, you're basically you're saying they've cornered the market on backup <laughs> quarterbacks <laughs> in Houston. Exactly. Okay. Nobody has more backup quarterbacks so than the Houston So we got Texas. that. So, so we got that. Uh, uh, the, next, the next contest on the list is the Tennessee Titans. Do you want me to start laughing too bit, a little bit too early? I mean, just stop it. So then we get to the New York Jets. That could be very interesting because yep. we had that. We mm -hmm. had that on the schedule as a potential loss mm -hmm. for the New England Patriots, particularly uh, the New England Patriots squad without Julian Edelman. But this is an AFC East rivalry. They do like going up to New York and ruining their day. Not to mention the fact you're talking about the New England Patriots, who are an elite organization, who knows how to make adjustments. And more importantly, they'll sit around and they'll be like this, hey, you know what? This is what we have to do to win this particular game, and the defense can overcompensate. They can compensate, or rather step up and compensate, because they can say, look, they're not going to be what we customarily see them being, because this is a defense that, that has playmakers. They can make things happen sure. with Nikovich and the crew. And then last but not least, you're at the Miami Dolphins, which could or could not be a very interesting situation. So what we're talking about here is the New England Patriots may be losing a game. Mm-hmm. That's really what we're talking about here. The debate is whether or not they're going to go undefeated mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. But I think the loss of Edelman yeah. will be minimal because I think I, all of those games are winnable and he'll be back for the playoffs. Well, I, I think I agree with you in, the, in this. I don't think it's really going to affect their schedule that much mm -hmm. from, from the standpoint of wins and losses. I still think they're going to win. I, 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 you know, I said it weeks ago. I think they're going to win out. Um, but it's oh, certainly. You think they're going to go undefeated? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it certainly, it certainly hinders that process to some degree. And then, you know, from a, from the standpoint of what kind of chemistry, what what do you have coming back when he does, and if he's healthy. So there's some question marks there. They're still, in my mind, the best team in the National Football League. Um, from a coaching standpoint, from an execution standpoint, you just go back to the Giants game, just from a management of the clock and the situation standpoint at the end of the game, they're the New England Patriots. There's a reason why they win. There's a reason why they're better than everybody else, because they're smarter and they out-execute everybody else. That's what it comes down to. By the way, Buffalo can back up Gilmore's mouth. Trust me. I think so. That team is coming together and coming on. This will be a battle on Monday night. I will bet you it will go to the wire. Really? Tyrod put up 32 on New England's defense at Buffalo. I 32. cannot tell you how shocked I am to hear you say that. Well, I, I actually I really thought Buffalo. I actually really thought that once you heard Gilmore opened mm -hmm. his mouth. Not, not I'm shocked time. to hear you say that. No, Good. I hope time. you're right because I don't feel like seeing a blowout. But I, so, I, I kind of I'm, 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 I don't know. I don't know. So back to the question. I still believe New England will win out in the regular season because Tom Brady is playing at the highest level I have ever seen any quarterback play at consistently. He's in some other place right now that no one's ever been in. I'm not saying he's the greatest quarterback ever. That's still Joe Montana. But no one has played at this level this long through a whole season. But this offense will definitely not be as explosive. Mm -hmm. Deion Lewis was a difference maker. Yes. They lost Shane Vereen to your New York Giants. Yeah. He was a difference maker for them, even in the Super Bowl. Go, go look at the numbers Shane mm -hmm. Vereen put up. This was maybe even beyond Shane Vereen because Dion was a little quicker, a little more elusive, a little more explosive. That's a huge loss. You already talked about what a freak show Edelman is. That's a huge loss. It took Danny Amendola a long time to earn Tom Brady's trust because he's not the typical Patriot. He, he, he's a little brittle and hasn't played with the guts some of the other that Edelman has played with. But he does have better hands than Edelman. That's the one thing I don't love about Julian. Didn't have great hands. Amendola will make big catches at big moments, and I think he has earned the trust. He just doesn't do it the way this guy does sure. it. But he is slippery, and he did make a hellacious spin move to get them in field goal position the other day against mm -hmm. your Giants. So the offense won't put up the same kind of points. It won't be yeah. as explosive. The games will get closer, but I still say if you have Brady, 
you, you're good, that, that he'll win these games different ways. With the tight end, Scott Chandler's going to have to play a bigger well, role. You know, I, it's amazing watching how many two tight end, three tight end formations they came do. in. That's right. And, you know, got this on Twitter, the Patriots mm-hmm. fans, their offensive line, it's Yahtzee. Right, just uh, just well, throw, uh, just throw it out there. Two or three of them are returning, though, right? Well, here, here was what was supposed it? to be back. They're last practicing. week. This was yeah. one of the the most amazing things for me last week. Their backup left tackle gets hurt. They move their backup right tackle to two, left tackle. Two weeks ago, yeah. Right, two weeks mm-hmm. ago. Yeah. They move a tight end into play yeah, right tackle for a while. Yeah. Then they move him out, and they take Stork, who started the Super Bowl it's at the impossible. center position, went to right tackle. Now, this is why I say they're smarter than everybody else. Right, because they put their guys in positions to win. They run the ball away from Stork the first time, mm-hmm. and then you know what they do? They throw a five-step drop with a set cut principle. Mm-hmm. So they're saying the ball's coming out of Tom Brady's hands. You don't have to hold up for very long. What we want you to do is set and then go cut. I mean, he uh, uh, almost cut this guy in half because on the say on the it, first it, pass, pro, two point five seconds. Right, the ball's the first be pass, pro. Yeah. He's in and right. saying we're going to set the tone for you and give you an opportunity, even though you're playing out of position yeah. to have I, success. Let, it may not be pretty, but you're going to have that opportunity. Last, That's coaching. Last comment. If what you two say about Julian Edelman's value comes to fruition, I believe the Jets beat them on December 27th. They're going to have a real shot. That's the game. I would have said Mm -hmm. the 29th, but Peyton went down. But I ain't picking Oswald to beat the. the, If if Edelman is what you say he is, and I have no, I know you know. I'm telling you right now, I think the Jets have a chance to knock the Jets. The Patriots come in there 14 and 0. And the Jets If they don't off. throw a bunch of smoke screens on third down and four and fourth down and two with man coverage, That's true. right? If they don't do That's that true. with a, uh, the gimpy wide receiver who's got that? a bad ankle, That's right. when you got a guy whose forehead's made of rebar and concrete right. and Chris Ivory in the backfield, then maybe you got a chance. That's right. Yeah. But it, you, you can't, you know, you can't continue to make the same mm-hmm. stupid mistakes that you made in the game against Buffalo on Thursday night. Fair enough. All right. Let's take it to the streets. Here's what the people had to say. We asked you earlier in the show which undefeated team is more likely to lose their first game this week. The results are in, and I swear we did not fix this. Listen to this. The Panthers, 38.2%, and the Patriots, 38.2%. That's unbelievable. Mm. Okay, I was more excited than you guys. Whatever. <laughs> Mark, thank you so much for being with us. I You're appreciate right. thank you. you. I'm just celebrating like myself, Johnny Manziel style. Mm. Moving on, the NFC West leading Cardinals are flying high in the desert, but do they have the potential to be super? We'll handicap Arizona's chance of playing in February. That's coming up. It's ours to win We'll keep throwing punches till the walls 